Hello and welcome. This is Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates on YouTube. This channel evaluates all aspects of true crime. As you are aware, videos and live streams in this genre often discuss elements of crime that may be disturbing to some viewers. If necessary, take the precautions needed to avoid these feelings. Factual information related to cases is the key to fostering rational true crime discussions. Fortunately, you will find that here. Please hit the like button only once, share the video, and subscribe if you like my content. Thank you very much for watching. like starting an engine. Ah, what's going on? Man, what a horrible viewership on that last video that I made. Unbelievable. But other than that, how's everybody doing? <laughs> it's like it just feels like a waste of time to make a video or something. So first I had it going and uh, let me show you, I'll show you what the, the stats on it. It's crazy. Let's see. But I noticed there's, there's, a, there's a campaign to dislike and hit the dislike button. Because the last two videos are, have 95% likes. But every one after that is 70, 97, 97, 97, 98. How could the long drive one have that many dislikes? <laughs> That's like a, a great video. Yeah, so look, look how uh, ridiculous this video. Oh, look at this, watch. See, this is the, uh, my normal, it's so far below anything, way down here. Normally I'm way up here into this category. It's way down here. And over here it says, oh, let me go back. Right here, uh, the, so the viewership from that was the browse feature. So that means a thousand of those views are somebody just randomly browsing around. And then 10% were YouTube search. So 200 of those were people just searching on YouTube. Suggested video, six. Channel pages. The notifications is not even on the screen because it's so low. Isn't that ridiculous? So if you're out there and you have your notifications set, uh, you might want to try unsubscribing, subscribing again, hit the notification bell, and then select all videos. All right, I don't know what the hell's going on here. Uh, I'm not sure why it said see more. You can't see in there. Yeah, I mean, look, look at that. I mean, that's just horrendous right there. That long two-hour video has 8,000 views, which is pretty good for a two-hour video. Uh, man, this one right here, it's ridiculous. Not sure what to do. Yeah, well, some people get them, some don't. But maybe people got the notification and just didn't bother watching it. It just isn't entertaining enough not as sensationalistic as you guys need um, I'm not really sure what the hell's going on um, but I know that the you know the, the crazy conspiracy nutters they, they go out of their way they actually conspire against me on 
social media platforms, uh, which is called brigadeering. They tell, okay, everybody go over there and, and start saying the, you know, cer certain things. You know, they do it all the time. So, hey, thanks, Bridget Price. <laughs> hey, it's true. But, uh, you know, again, look, at, look how few people are even here on this live stream right now. You know, it just is really odd. Something, I go through these weird phases where it gets like that. I have no idea why. I mean, I have 117,000 subscribers. You would think just hitting the live button, you'd get five, 600 people accidentally. But nope. The one up there, it was, the topic is, it says, which is it? That would make people go, oh, what does he mean? Which is it? You know, and it's, it was about the comparing. Everybody keeps saying there's a Chry Chrysler 300 versus uh, a 2015 Elantra. Chewbacca? Oh, I'll be Chewbacca if you want me to. So anyways, that's what I've been working on. <laughs> I actually made like an animation so I'm trying to figure out, I was trying to figure out what we're even looking at in the, in the uh, surveillance footage. Okay, but I'm going to need your guys' support tonight because last night was an abomination yet again. And it'd be cool if we could somehow try to meet the, uh, the goal, all right? So look at it. Here's what, here's what I got right there. I think I need to make this go down. Yeah, there, now it's in the ground. So there's the Elantra coming around the corner. And it kind of, you know, it's going uphill the whole time. See? So I think that looks pretty good. I mean, it looks similar to what we're looking at in the surveillance footage. Now from the top, just so you know I've got it right, I mean, I'm literally putting these cubes on top of the building that's there. Right, and then I put the wall where the wall is. Hey, thanks, GGT. Is that it, or is it Giggy? Yeah. So see how it comes around and it goes behind that wall like that. So that's the top view, and the camera I have put right where the camera is. So when you look through the camera, it looks like that. But however, the camera is a fisheye lens. Already, why, why are we going to do the Chiefs fan again? <laughs> we, we've already done the Chiefs fan thing like 50 times already. Why, why would we do it again? It's, that one's obvious. They've already have a, has an, they already have an answer in that one. Hey, thanks, Eugenie. I don't know what crumbly is. Never heard of it. I tried to view at 9 p.m. and it said video removed. Well, yeah, the one, uh, that's because I set it to accidentally to um, members only. And as soon as you do that and you switch it over to public, it doesn't re-notify uh, notify anybody. So I just uh, deleted it and did it again. <coughs> Yeah, what we're looking at right here is this. I'm still working on this thing. I'm trying to, you know. <clears throat> so this is it coming around. But you got to realize, I didn't realize what we were looking at here. Uh, the, the area in the background, right? So the reason, um, so what, what you're looking at right here is, doesn't it seem like when you look at this picture right here, that there's a fence that goes all along and then at a right angle is a brick wall or, or a cement wall. Do you guys see that? Does everybody see what I'm saying? Like, oh, wow, okay, the, brick, the fence goes along. And then at a right angle off of the end of the fence is a cement wall going 90 degrees, right? 
That's what it looks like, but that isn't reality, okay? That isn't reality at all. So I think it's always interesting to go and look at things like what we're doing, going to be doing right now, investigating it. All right? So it looks like it goes boom, boom, but watch what the reality is here. So this is, I have my camera exactly right where the surveillance camera is. And by the way, look at, see the wall right there and the cement wall. And then there's the fence. You see that? Now we go back to Google Earth. Now look, there's the striations on the wall. That, but, they, but look at the distortion of this lens. See how everything's going up at an angle like this? And then on the uh, actual footage, I mean, the real in real life, <laughs> well, that, that, that's something else going like that. But look at the, um, all I can say is, in this video, it, if you drew a line, you went like this, it would go off into the sunset, not follow this line. But you look at that, and it kind of looks the same, you know, like there's a fence, and then that wall there. But you want to see what the reality looks like? It's not even close. I mean, it isn't even it isn't even close to that. So so look at look at how crazy this is. Uh, let me, I got I got to go back in there. Hold on. See, there's the fence right there, right? And that's the rest of the, the cement wall going like that. You see that? <laughs> it isn't even close to what you would perceive. I mean, the, the fence ends right there. So if we go back to the surveillance footage, there's the end of the fence. And then here's this brick wall. That brick wall continues to go out, and the end of it is way over here. I mean, it's interesting. Right? Because here is the end of it. You see that? <laughs> yeah, it's like it's totally different. Like before, it seems like uh, if you went back a little bit and you were uh, looking at this fence here, that all of a sudden, right off the end of that post, it went straight that way. Okay? But it doesn't, doesn't do that at all. So it's crazy, the distortion that's on that lens. Um, so you've got, uh, back here is the surveillance camera, and now that we know, and by the way, I can go back to, let me go back to uh, the other shot here, in this one. Yeah, so it's right in here, I and mean, that's almost perfect right there. If you go back to the surveillance, see how you can see that part of the building back there? And then if you go to the surveillance, you can see that part of the building right there. I'm just zoomed way in. I mean, if we went out to, uh, let's see, maybe there's one that's... Hey, thanks, Cheryl Bullock. See, there you go. So there's a little bit more space there. So let me try to get exactly... I had a perfect shot earlier, but I... That's almost there. Yeah, pretty much like right there is good. Look at that. And then if you zoom in over here, uh, I think even the sort of um, marks on this brick wall show up. But even on my, my using my camera, but I'm using a, a fisheye lens. Uh, a 360 degree camera. Now watch this, when I draw a line from here and I go straight out, it goes like that. You know, like or like like this, right? And but it seems like right there it turns. But it doesn't really do that. It's it's really uh, crazy to be honest with you. And I th I'm not sure even I think that might be the corner right there. Uh, very very odd hard to decipher just looking at like if you were just looking at this you wouldn't be able to draw that you'd have no idea all 
All right, so look at right here. This portion right here is the end of the video. See that? It's right there. It doesn't drive up here or anything like that. The end of the video is right here. Because watch, let's go back. There's the the dark, uh, one of the dark, I don't know what you call that, siding things there, and then another vertical one. And then you see the car right in this area. And if you go back to this, you see there's one, two, so right here is it, okay? And so what's interesting, if you go to back to, uh, let me see what one this is, 412. Right. So when you're coming around, you can't even see, you can just barely see up there. So that means when the car is driving, when you're driving the vehicle, which I actually have in this video, or I did have it open earlier. Let me, uh, ah, I don't think I can find that quick enough. But the car right in this spot is heading to the right. And then it straightens out right in that spot. But as, when it's right here, it has a different look, and then boom, it turns, and it has a different look on the camera. And so this is the spot that the surveillance is. It's not up here while it's driving by. It's right in here, right in that area. And the camera's right over there. And so that means it's kind of, uh, so now when you look at this, it's right there. But notice how when the car is coming around, you can see the, the windshield, and you can see that. Let's go look at the, the one that's from this time of day, watch. When it's driving by, right here, I don't know if you can see that, but that's the windshield of that vehicle, right there. See, that's the windshield of it. This is the one that's actually could be a Chrysler 300. And then here it comes. Now it's going to take turn hard. See, this is where it's turning hard and you get a profile shot of it right there. And then it's going to straighten out. But, you know, that's where there's some variations in it. You don't know if somebody cuz right there you can still see the the windshield. See that? The darkness there. And then it turns like that. And then now, I think if it, you could keep watching it, you might be able to see even the back of the vehicle there. Which you, uh, so take a look at this one. You know, definitely need some super chats on this one, you guys. Yeah, you guys are, uh, last couple nights, <laughs> like I, I do good work here. So there it is, making a hard right turn and then right in there so this is the spot where you would have to you would turn left again and you can tell that the video itself is distorted because the wall doesn't go straight off like we all thought it did <laughs> i mean when you're it's it's really crazy um so this just looking at this again let me go back there's the end of the fence right there and then here's the cement wall that we are looking at in the surveillance footage, not this one. It has nothing to do with this wall here. And then it, I mean, I mean, it's even a little bit back this way. I mean, it's crazy because it actually, I might even cut off right here because look at how this thing, that's there, that's there, and that's there. And like we were saying, it cuts it off right here. So if you were going to, that's kind of cool to be able to do that. So if you look up in the air right here, um, you know, that that means it's to the right, yeah, because if you look at the way this is set up, that would run into the wall there. So if it's over here, that means it's filming behind the corner here.
Yeah, right there. Thanks, Alley Cake and Jeff H. Enormous difference in what Lena did with a camera out there and what Gray did. I don't even know who that is. I don't watch, the, you know, all these random. I mean, it's funny how all these YouTubers watch all these other YouTubers. I don't want to have their thoughts, you know. Like, if somebody goes, oh, great, look at this garbage somebody's doing. I might watch it so I can try to debunk something. But I never watch it to get any sort of insight or anything because it's never worth it. It's always nonsensical sort of drivel, unfortunately. Right, I, I wouldn't be watching a, a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, it's just uh, it's not it's not worth the time and effort. Uh, let me see. So it's actually a little bit more. Let me go back to this camera. Go right there ish. I think that's closer to. See how there's just that little gap there. But see, check this thing out. Look at, see this uh, horizontal line right there? Can you guys just barely make that out a little bit? Right here, there's a, a horizontal sort of, it's not vertical like the rest of them, it's just horizontal right there. Enormous difference in what Lana did with the camera out See, when you go here though, look at that horizontal line, it goes straight up. Job, as always, great. I mean, not straight up, but like it goes at a, a sharp angle up. And so that means that uh, it definitely distortion on here. It's straight, but uh, something <laughs> isn't working. Especially here, I mean, I guess you could look at this as kind of arcing maybe, and you might be able to kind of arc it, but it's still right there. And when you go, to, if you're on street views, this is 401. This is when I was there in September. Mm -hmm. That's just absolutely straight off of that, that fence. And so what that means is right in here is where we're, I think this is the, about the end. Let me, let me go back and watch some of that again. Yeah, exactly. So look at, see how there's this dark pillar right there? See that? The, this guy, he ends it right there, but uh, normal videos, I'm not sure why he does that. But right when you go past the second one, you're kind of exiting the screen. Thank you, Jessica Schubach. And so that means in my video, or just this animation here, it's right in this area where we're at, right there. And see how you can see some of the back, the top of that? That gives some thickness looking to the the side paneling of the roof portion right so it gives some height to it when it doesn't really um, I don't know why you guys even know about the people that Jeff's talking about why, why are you watching that stuff it's actually embarrassing to me it's like I feel like why are you watching me then go watch that all right why give that shit any kind of a time of day ridiculous right, let, me, let me I gotta go look at this again yeah so it's at an angle it's coming in well, I, don't, I don't know what it is it doesn't really matter what it is anyway so here we go we're going like this and coming around So I see what they're always saying is that that's that slope that you see there, but I'm I'm trying to figure out if it's because it's turning hard right right now. See, because right here, if you're coming out too wide, right here you'd have to turn hard right, and then it show then you got a, a more of an angle where the vehicle, uh, like if you were, 
looking at this, I mean, I don't know how to, um, let me just try to randomly rotate this whole thing here. Hey, thanks, Riddler. There we go. So you might be coming in. And I, uh, that's just not going to work. I'll have to undo that. But coming in more like this, right? And then if you go to the camera, see how you can see much more of the top of it, and it kind of has a thicker look to it now of the vehicle. Thank you. Yee. I only need about another uh, 100 of those, you guys. Let's go. Learn something new. I see a flat top roof instead of a sloped. Right. That's because you're, you're accepting what somebody said. Here, I'll show you here exactly what I'm talking about. Watch that. So how come right there, it doesn't have, see right in there? Right in there, it looks just like an Elantra. Okay, but then it takes a hard right right now. Boom, because it has to get around that corner. And the thing is, is the, as soon as you do that, let me go back, I'm gonna undo these. See, I think you can't even see, I think that it looks like this. Let me hit the, uh, the line and go down. It's kind of like you only see a certain portion of it and the car gets squished in because of the distortion and then it's turning to the right. But you don't get to see the downward part. I don't know, it's hard to explain it. <laughs> it's hard to explain it. And uh, wh why do you want to know if there's a no parking sign on there? Does it really have any effect on the case or anything? Like, I don't see anything. Uh, maybe this it's gone now. Very helpful. Thank you. From the, as, from the time of the murders, I guess. Hey, thanks. Uh, can't keep on pancakes. Now if somebody could start a wave with a higher number, we'd probably be able to get to the goal at some point during the night. That'd be awesome. Thank you, Michelle H. It's wild to think the knife may never be found I don't think it's wild. It's kind of typical in a lot of cases. Murder weapons never found. I'm going to get to the... Uh, Go from 26, 27th early, I think. Not that one. Oh, that was just me leaving. Ah, just about. <laughs> and that picks up right there, that's funny. I had this open earlier, but I don't know where it is now. <clears throat> this is that back road that you could take that could kill the 17 minutes. I actually drove the route that the, the caller came up with.
Oh, that's weird how it just disappeared. I, just, I was just looking at it earlier. Just Thank looking you. for it. Oh, this might be it right here. No, nope, I drove around. That's not it. How about the one before? Oh yeah, it's me on Valenta. So maybe it's the one right before the... Uh, maybe I should go all the way back around. Let's see. No. That'd be the next one. No, that was... Thank you. Wow. <laughs> I was just looking at this earlier and it just it's gone now. Probably maybe I deleted it. That one's the one that was broken. Ah, I'm sure I have some more. when we drove up into the uh, mountains over there and now it's dark wow oh this might have it oh there it is <laughs> that was the first one all right, so this is what it, what your car would have to do again. So just kind of picture it like that. This is what he would do. Time, drive around like this. Thanks, Kathy. And so, like right there, boom. That's where the can the car is caught on camera, right there. So it's taking a hard turn there, and then it straightens out again. And so I'm wondering, like, when you combine all these different effects with the cat eye at turning, if it can create a look right, right, right behind, that looks right. like that. That's what he would do. Turn, drive around like this. Yeah, so you have to kind of come out wide and then you go in sharp like that. And I think that's kind of what I have on my model here. I'm not going to spend, I think it's even more sharp than that. It comes in like this and then steeper in. I mean, you don't have to do that. You could do what I just did in this one. Yeah, but it, it's kind of interesting how you can see almost exactly the same. Now, what was funny, the boys? No, it has nothing to do with my numbers, uh, Carolyn. It has nothing to do with it. Hey, thanks, Laura. Gray I, Gray, I found your channel yesterday and already watched so many of your videos. I've been following this case from the beginning and love how concise you are. Isn't that weird, though, that you hadn't seen any of my videos since the beginning? 
<laughs> I mean, it, it's really weird, isn't it? I mean, I've, I've been making videos since two days after the murders. I, I still don't know what the laugh is. I can't tell. Yeah, it's really weird, though. But hey, thank you. Appreciate that you just follow the facts and ignore the noise. Well, I don't really always ignore the noise. I try to debunk the noise, but it's not part of my... I've been following this case from beginning, and I hope how concise you are. I appreciate that you just follow the facts and ignore the noise. Yeah, I think that what you're going to see uh, at the trial is that there are going to be ca the camera at 1112 King Road is going to tie in the vehicles that are going behind 500 Queen Road back here. And I'm trying to f do this because I'm, you know, I do see the thing where, you know, there's a slope on the back of the car in certain pixelated shots now look at look at it right now if you're looking at that window i don't know if you can see it but way up in the upper left hand corner and maybe if we go let me see i guess that's closer in there but see how right there that's almost absolutely perfect for the elantra see how it goes right in there sharp around like this but then you just go like a couple frames later and now it's like this angled portion and then you see the back window that's what this is right here and then I mean is that like a combination of I mean, it's just it's blurry see what happens when you have at night like this you get like a um, streaking sort of thing where it's moving and you get like the previous position it would have been in a normal video, it's still there. Because the it's like motion blur basically is what I'm saying. The you know the camera lens is open and the shutter speed's slow and I think that causes a problem. But thank you up there Laura. And yes you guys if you can help support my channel every single night we try to raise funds to help keep me uh, you know able to keep doing these shows and then at the same time uh, i try to give back quite a bit of money from the entire channel's income at the end of the month and because of the the way it's you know like every single night i'm doing the shows i'm able to give away a lot all right so the only way to make that happen is if you guys are helping support the channel. Last night uh, didn't really work in here for some reason. So let's not have two nights in a row of the same sort of catastrophe. Now I don't think it's, everyone always types in, I still think it's crazy, like, like the day later. Uh, I still think it's cra crazy they demolished the house. Why do people use that phraseology? I still think the... Um, no idea, no idea. I don't know uh, why they don't, so, you know, I don't know why. I think what it was is like, I didn't cover the case for a huge period of time because there wasn't anything. And then I realized after about four months, uh, we'd already covered all the, everything that you could do. And then I just saw all the crazy stuff going on. So I came back in to sort of re-inject the case with a, a rational look at it. Anybody there? That's just so weird to me, though. I mean, if you're getting here late, I, I wanted to show you, for the people that are here late, see on their surveillance footage here, 
the fence line it goes like this and then there's this well I'll just show you on, on the clear one that was done on you know this is later in the morning and somebody had a sample of this out here so here's this fence right and then you would think that this cement fence is a 90 degree fence or like a cement wall that goes off of it just based on what it looks like there because if you were going to go like this you would shoot over here right however it isn't like that whatsoever doesn't have any doesn't look like that at all as a matter of fact there's the end of the fence here's the straight part of the cement wall and if we go up here a little bit you know you can see the wall right there that's all you can see is that wall this wall here has nothing to do with that video which is weird I always thought it did yeah I know uh, Tara that, that guy is an absolute idiot okay so I, I don't really care you don't need to mention his name like you're advertising for that person okay it's don't don't advertise for the insane Yeah, it's kind of interesting. See these little um, grease marks on the wall back in the background there? Yeah, I notice whenever I do my sort of um, push to help get some support for the channel, it just falls on deaf ears lately. Never used to. For three and four years, you guys are always there. Now it's totally different. I don't know if there's too many channels or what the hell's going on, but sucks. <laughs> Anyways, so when you look back here, uh, you can see the wall. You see the grease dripping there, and then there's like two right next to the pole. If you go back over here, um, yeah, like it's, uh, earlier, let me go back to a little different spot. It's hard to get the exact angle on the pole. Yeah, I think I can see him right there. Yeah, so those ones right here, I think, is going to be right here. And you can see the two dark pillars on the building over there. And there's the two dark pillars. And I think a little bit more like that, like that. Yeah, so that means that the surveillance footage cuts off right here. All we see is from right there and over. And then you can kind of look and try to figure out what the car would be doing before it gets to. Because uh, I think this might be, <laughs> it's weird too because then it keeps going up. But it almost looks like that's the corner there. And then the wall actually goes that direction. That's what it looks like though. Let me, let me look again on the... Oh, there's a good way to look at that. Right there. There you go. 
Hey, thanks, Cali Gal Three. Wow, you came in for the rescue. Thank you. <laughs> You're the best. Don't forget it. You might be smarter than your audience. Just saying. <laughs> wow. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of smart people that watch my show. That's why they watch the show because they. Uh, but what I'm trying to get is, I want people to think of supporting my channel because of all the great stuff that we do too. You know, I I um, I know that it's like. Why should I have to give anybody anything on, on you don't have to give anything all right if you want to that'd be awesome but uh, you know um, for example last month we gave four thousand dollars out of the income two thousand went to our DNA fund yet again and we just had another announcement for a case that we solved of a serial killer victim uh, we just had that one uh, without us they wouldn't have got that and the only way to make that happen is like this right here Anyways, thank you, Kelly Gal 3. You are the best. Don't forget it. You might be smarter than Oh yeah, there's all kinds of haters out there for sure. A lot of them. Uh, what was the scolding? I didn't hear a scolding. I just said, you know, it used to be on this channel, I could do the show. And people just kind of knew what we were doing, and it's just, lately I have to always keep asking, and I hate it. <laughs> I hate asking, and but I have to because it's the only way to make, make the show worth doing. I mean, I, you know, I do three-hour shows every single night. So, sorry, Susan, if you take it that way, but that's not what I was doing whatsoever. I'm just letting you know what the reality is, so... But anyways, how you doing, uh, Cali Gal Three? She's a uh, a court reporter. She always keeps saying, "Oh yeah, yeah, we're gonna come on," and but we never seem to make it happen. What the heck, Jesus? Well, thank you, the Broken Scout. I'll be going back to listening mode. Super war. Oh, how many miles did you walk today? I did three. <laughs> That's about it. I didn't keep going. And thank you, Kami. Appreciate it. Very kind, very kind. They are now saying that we should be donating our cells and don't need a middleman. Oh, yeah, well, they always say that. I'm do I'm donating to shady organizations. Yeah, here's the thing, everybody. If you want to donate directly to charities, I've said this a million times. Despite they, you know, them, go out and do that. However, if you want to help support my channel, uh, that'd be great too. I'm going to be donating a lot of the money as well. That's it. That's how it works over here. Uh, we've been doing it for f five years. You know. I'm And people like Susan up there don't really realize Let's that we've given $183,000 to true crime related charities and um, over 80 to Identifinders International, which is um, uh, we fund through, um, I think it's uh, Intermountain Forensics, and then they take the money and give it directly. They get, a, you know, Identifinders gets all of it, but they use. Intermountain Forensics for some of the processes in the forensic genetic genealogy world. Okay, so, you know, uh, when they say uh, get rid of the middleman, great, yeah, go out and donate to charities if you want. Yeah, awesome. And is, let me ask you guys, does anybody think that the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children is a shady organization? Anybody out there at all? And if you do, I'm going to block you from my channel. Well, Gray, I just had a different opinion. If you think that they're a shady organization, you're gone. Okay? They've been around for decades helping families of missing persons. Okay. Do you think Texas EquiSearch with um, Miller is a shady organization? Do you think Rain? R-A-I-N-N -N is violence against women. 
do you think that's a shady organization? Is Identifinders International. I mean, you know, where, where are you coming up with this shit? <laughs> These people are insane, all right? Blue looked, uh, Chloe looks almost pink today. Tractor channels are upset that Gray is on. With, yeah, yeah, they they didn't like that I was on there. And you should see the comments there in there. They're just trying to disparage, discredit. They keep saying, what credentials does Gray have? Well, here's here's what credentials I've ha I have. I've been doing... Um, I've done thousands of different cases in a seven-year period. I went to the um, Art Institute for Animation and Media Arts. Then I applied that skill to making three-dimensional crime scenes in early on in, like, for example, the Jody Arias case where I made a perfect model of the entire area, including putting the exact bloody tiles on the floor, and the blood spatter and everything right in there. And because of that work, a prosecutor in New York heard about me he, from Brooklyn and they hired me to do uh, videos reconstructing a crime, right? And we won. And the jury actually said, oh yeah, as soon as we saw that video, <laughs> my, my, my animation, uh, that's what sold it. So, you know, you can just go F for yourselves, everybody. And when I say everybody, I'm talking about the trolls, not you guys. Gray said if you, everybody, did you hear that? I'm talking to the trolls, all right? So, you know, wh you might, whatever you want to count that as, you can count it as, but I've been doing this for a long time, so I know what I'm doing. You know, I know what I'm looking at. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, blues just done so much better. It's uh, it's such a weird. Lasix is an absolute miracle drug for somebody that has the fluid buildup from, uh, or a dog even. I mean, it's incredible. Like he he was like respiratory distress. You know, eighty something breaths a, a minute. Uh, wasn't getting enough oxygen, wasn't moving, struggling, and just like a day and a half on Lasix, boom, he got back to like almost like the normal blue. Doesn't he? He does cough sometimes, but not anywhere near what he was coughing before. So how amazing is that? <laughs> you could eat them up. Mm-hmm. Where did uh, did Cali Gal three uh, do a follow up comment? I didn't see her. She does that sometimes. Just pops in, boom, and it's real fun. Eat it, <laughs> eat it, eat it. Uh, no, see, Blue would always kind of, I'd taken him in. He, they've always said he had like a enlarged heart, and that's probably why he's coughing a little bit and everything like that. Um, but, it, you know, it started, <clears throat> I'd say like a year or so, he's just kind of been coughing. And then the other day, he was coughing, coughing, and then it just like his breathing was like, yeah, it just, he was, he was struggling. And I was going to wait overnight, actually, and just kind of see how he was doing in the morning because I thought that the, I gave him, I thought maybe the cough medicine that I gave him, it's like kind of like, a, I think it's something sulfate, like uh, codeine sulfate or something. I thought maybe he had too much of that and was just kind of tired and lethargic from that. But then he, and we put him on our bed, and you know when you get up to the dog and you kind of, wrestle with him and play with their stomach he wouldn't m move like he he would just kind of like his arm he would just sort of 
you know, wherever you wanted to move him, he'd move, and he's never like that at all. You know, he fights any of that shit. So that's when I thought, okay, I'm, I'm, a, I gotta, you know, I gotta make a phone call. And then I started calling around, and finally, Dove Lewis was open, and um, I actually thought he wasn't gonna make it. Right when we brought him in there, I was like, God, this. And uh, the guy came back, and he said, Yeah, I think. Um, and if we can get that fluid out of there, I think he might be, he might have another year and a half, a year, year and a half. And I was like, what? Oh my God, yeah, well, go ahead. And then they were saying, oh, that's going to be, might be like 5,000 to, I was, yeah, I was like, oh man, that's a lot. But yeah, just, you know, a year, year and a half, he's totally worth it. Uh, but yeah, and then it only ended up costing three, which is amazing. I was like, man, how does it ever go down after they tell you what the, what the, <laughs> what the cost is? You know, uh, blue is like twelve or something like twelve or thirteen. We don't really know exactly because we got him when he was around two. We didn't really know exactly when his birthday was. It's his birthday every day at, at this place. So I mean, look at that. <laughs> Doesn't that look like somebody's birthday <laughs> in there? Come on. Yeah, none of them know really anything about me, Stacy. I'm just some sort of a pariah that they attack and uh, just go after on a daily basis with nothing. So I think in this picture right here, this is the corner. That little where that weed is right there. See how it kind of goes and then it has a sharper upturn that kind of follows the road. Look how steep that, that just gives you the idea of how steep it is though. Look at that. Because that wall and so the vehicle comes around and then it turns. And I just think that's why you're seeing some sort of anomalies in terms of the sighting and things like that because it's turning. And it, the video is distorted. I'm, you're going to say that every day? Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's like his birthday every second. Let me see if there you can see him better on the full. No. Here, let me, I'm going to go move the camera around. Oh, there you go. See right there, he's doing that cough thing that he does sometimes. He just drank a bunch of water right there, though. But just look at him. Doesn't he just look way better again? <laughs> he just looks, uh, you know, when you watch the the breathing count, it's just kind of, every time he drinks uh, water, sometimes he gets a little bit like that. But he doesn't struggle to breathe at all. Let me see what he's at. I'll have to count it here in a minute. <coughs> I think he's trying to like cough again. Um. I 
I can't tell what his rate is at. He just got a Lasix pill about an hour and a half ago. Yeah, he's definitely feeling better. I'm sure he has moments where he doesn't feel that great, but I gotta count his uh, breathing. It's supposed to be around like 30 to. <laughs> Look at Chloe right there. Oh man, she's out of it. Yeah. So I was just trying all day today. I was working on this thing, trying to figure out. Um, if I could show, but it's just, it's too hard to do because I can't replicate the, um, the, the camera and how it's wide angle and also how, I mean, you can do something like, if you take it and bring it about right here, because I think this is it. This is where the shot is that we're looking at and we, do that. Maybe take that image right there. And then Yeah, maybe take that picture. Let me see what happens if I went filter or image. I'll edit transform. Um, I think it's warp. There you go. So you can kind of mimic a cat eye look in here. So you can take this and then kind of go over. Kind of like that a little bit. Yeah. The thing is, is I don't. You can't see that much of the back of it, and I, I. It's so complicated the ground back there that I really can't make it exactly the same. All I did was make a slope up, but obviously there's flatness, and then it goes really steep up. You know, like it, there's actually this flat area, and then it goes really steep up. It doesn't have a gradual slope from back there. See, like when it comes around, then it goes steep right there. And then there's this other segment it's kind of flat-ish right here, even though you can see the bricks there. And then it goes pretty steep up. And then it's way higher. I mean, the, the drop-off from here to up here, do you guys want to see how big that is? Man, man, it's so strange how I got, I lost the, uh, the screen's going to go dark for a second. The Google Earth, it doesn't show anymore on the, let's see, expand. What if I did that? Does that? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right, so right here, if you just hover the mouse over here, it's 2,679 feet above sea level. So I'll just use 679. And then right here it is 698. So that's 19 feet high, higher. I mean that's double the height of a basketball hoop in that short distance that you see from 
right there to right over there. Is that crazy? Or what? Here, let's see what it looks like from when you're coming in from all the way down there. Hey, that's a good picture right there. But uh, look at way, you had to drive way up there and so that was a measurement from like back here. I don't know, I think we can just chalk it up to, um, I mean, my, my opinion is this, that even though I, I'm not able to replicate the few frames where it has that angle on it, I can see that there are frames where it looks just like an Elantra. And so I think it defaults to the Elantra because law enforcement told us it was an Elantra that was driving in the area and made three initial passes and then entered the area again at 404, came right back here where I am, did a, three, uh, did a turn right here and then went back this direction. I mean, hell, you could almost go backwards, pretend you're driving. And then right here did a, you know, kind of turned around, tried to park And then right down here, uh, if you want to look, that's where the 1112 King Road camera is. And then this is where the three-point turn was done. And then after the three-point turn was done, the car went back up this direction, just like this. That was kind of a cool way to be able to do that, just go backwards. And right there on, right in that spot is a beautiful surveillance camera with crystal clear video and of course you know light could blow it out but when it does that three-point turn you're gonna have a side shot and you'll be able to tell then it drove right back up like this again and this time it came around and it finished going off in that direction well thanks buttercup203 Uh, why do I think he turned around? The first, like why he turned around and went back? Well, I've always thought that uh, it had something to do with the door dash and the lights, you know. It could be that when he pulled into the area at 405, a door dash driver was driving by him or just pulling out of the parking lot spot when he was coming back here. And then he was like, well, what's going on? So he drove back out that way instead of going around because then you'd have to kind of go down the narrow chute again. And, you know, he turned around and went back. I don't know why he didn't just go loop around again or something, though. I, I can't really give you an answer for that. Why does anybody do anything? Well, of course they do, Kathleen. They, they got a ton. Yeah, they, I mean, they even mentioned how they have other cameras in the area we're just not you know not going to document every one of them they were just showing the first one that they saw was at 326 on indian hills drive the second one they mentioned because they're showing it how it's moving towards the residence was that well i'll show you on the map here did i close that down again is it open underneath there it is Oh, that's weird. This map's so old. Look at look at the difference here. I was I didn't even recognize it, but watch this. <laughs> okay, yeah, now it makes sense. So he went up here like this. And then on Alice Street, we've done this drive many many times. And then right here is a surveillance camera at seven hundred Indian Hills Drive. And then it kept driving around like this, and the timing matches absolutely perfectly. Driving up here, turning left on Steiner, and driving by the A&W at 328 ish. You know, some somewhere in the 328 hour, right there. 
or minute, I mean. So like three, could be 328 and 20 seconds. You know, and then so it drives by here, and this is Lauder Avenue. Then it comes up on the Taylor Avenue, and then it comes on the King Road right here, and it enters the area the first time at 3.30. And that's exactly when you see the cam the video of the vehicle driving around right at that time. The white Elantra comes around, it enters the area, and then it it goes right around like this. Now, the guy out there thinks that it didn't leave on Walenta Drive other than the first time it went back there. But that doesn't really make any sense to me. Now, because it does say it made its uh, first of three passes around 3.30. Uh, I think we might have to open that up again. I, th I think I could make some great exhibits for them, I can tell you that. I'd even do it for free. What do you, what do you think of that? All right, so let me, I, I want to <laughs> read it again because I, the other day I was like, wait, that does sort of sound. So it says, suspect vehicle one starting at 3.29 a.m. and ending at 4.20. These sightings show suspect vehicle one make an initial three passes by 1122 King Road residence and then leave via Walenta Drive. So, I mean, when you read it that way, there is a way you can read that and think that that means that it does the three passes, then it leaves on Walenta Drive on its own, like one time, on the initial three, right? It doesn't say, um, let's see, it doesn't say, it makes initial three passes and leave on Walenta Drive each time. It, may, it could just be that it's leaving that out there. But what I wouldn't understand, though, if it stayed there, until three, you know, three thirty all the way to three fifty-seven, and it's just driving around in circles around five hundred King uh, Queen Road. There, that would be weird. They, they made a lot of mistakes in this document here. Um, you know, errors in grammar and descriptions, etc. Yeah. So right here it says the suspect vehicle can be seen. Entering the area fourth time at 4.04 a.m., and that means on Taylor Avenue. It can be seen driving eastbound on King Road. And so that means it's heading back behind. You know, so on here, this is eastbound. So unfortunately, they called this King Road here, but it's not. I mean, if you go back, I think in earlier maps here, that road isn't even there, um, I don't think, back at this time. Uh, maybe it is. Let me, let me see. It might be a further time back. There's a, there's a point where, uh, yeah, see, look at that. Like, I don't see that road right there. There's a tree here. You see that? So you come in, this is King Road, and there was a driveway that you could take to get over here. Uh, back in the day so these were all that's why they it's still 112 King Road but this is Queen Road now yeah definitely totally different that was 2004 maybe yeah, we should go look at uh, Google Maps What does it look like in 2007? No, 2009. It looks like that's not there either. Somehow, let me let me just go look. Ah, they don't have any historical 
They've only been there once. Ah, that's brutal. I could do not have. Actually, this one's from 2007, so if we look back, okay, that road is there then. So I don't know when that wasn't that. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so anyways, this is Queen Road right here, apparently, and... I mean, it's just really confusing, so I understand why they would say king or queen or whatever. But anyways, it says it heads east. At 404, it can be seen heading, you know, around that time. So it's entering the area at 404. Then it's seen entering the area the fourth, uh, you know, the fourth time at 404. It can be seen driving eastbound on King Road, stopping and turning around in front of 500 Queen Road number 52. So it drives around like this, and this is Queen Road number 52 right here. We see it right on camera, and we see that that's a white Elantra. You can actually see the window shape and everything, and it turns around right here, right? And then right after that, it says, when suspect vehicle one is in front of the King Road residence, it says it then drives westbound on King Road. So it says after it turns around right here, it heads west on King Road, but this is Queen right here. But it's obvious what they're saying, you know. It's like, well, there is... Hey, they, they go like this. How do you turn west on King Road when it's north and south? Well, because it's an error, right? I mean, just think logically through it. You don't need to keep wondering and wondering. So it's like west on King Road. And then it tries to stop and turn around and park. So it says attempt to park, turn around in the road. The vehicle then continues to the intersection of Queen Road and King Road where it can be seen completing a three-point turn and then driving eastbound again down Queen Road. So now they get it correct on that one. So they said it turns around here and goes down Queen Road. Well, right at the exact timing of that, you see one of those loops where the guy claims it's a Chrysler 300. Well, how can that be the Chrysler 300? Are you saying that the Chrysler 300 is like right in front of the white Elantra and they're just kind of doing these weird little dances and uh, musical chairs or something because if that's a if that truly is a Chrysler 300 going around then that means when the white Elantra did a three-point turn it drove this way and it decided to go this way but right in front of it was the Chrysler 300 who went around like this and then you're gonna say because there's two people gray there's two of them that's why he said. <laughs> Hell, I better watch out. I'll convince myself. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, the Christ learner lived right there next to the kid. Right. He, well, we don't know if that was really him living right here. Right? We don't really know that. I mean, I drove by there, and he goes, Oh, look at, ooh, 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 ooh. When, when he went by there, when great, I think it was when, uh, let's go look, it's on one of these. I think it might be on this one, even. Let's see. But no, I think like it was right there. Was it one of the ones where I was driving? Uh, let me. I think it might be on the second uh, December version. No. Hmm. I don't remember which one he used of mine. Oh, is that maybe that's it right there? One of those? No, the one right before it, I think. Yeah, there it is. He thinks it's like this one, right? Maybe. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, jeez. All right, you guys, don't forget to help support the channel. We had one of those long lulls again. Very few people tonight. Yeah, 
So I can't really explain, uh, you know, I can just tell you that it's definitely, there's a, there's warping going on. You can see even here, this is curved and this is a fence and this continues straight out, but it looks like it curves. So that means there's going to be some curving of the vehicle. Um, you know, but when you play it, you know, you see something drive by and then there, it looks like there's this whiter white back that's sort of angular when it, in certain like a few frames in a row even when you go like this but then right when it goes by the pole right there that looks like an Elantra how it's curved and everything so I just think the further it gets near the edge the more warping it might that might happen but then you could say because I don't know why he didn't keep playing this past here like it just sort of ends there. Uh, does it do? And it's really cool to be able to see. I can see really clearly the windshield back there of this Chrysler 300. And then it does a really hard turn right here. See that? So yeah, you can see the front windshield. And then it just goes right there. Turns hard right. But it doesn't look like that. I think this is totally different. And when you go to the uh, the final, where is that one? This one. Here, just watch this again. Yeah, totally different sound. They'll just claim that, well, we fixed the audio, and uh, after we remove the noise, that's what it sounds like. It's kind of crazy how you can, it almost looks like you can see the person in that car, even though that's not related. See, like right there is looks like an exactly like an Elantra. Can you see that? See, uh, and there's a little darkness there, but if you got rid of that, you could slide. Look at how that goes right there, and then down, and it's just the perfect shape. You see, can everybody see that? Absolutely perfect, right there for an Elantra. But then merely just like a frame later. Like a frame later, all of a sudden it straightens out, which is you know virtually impossible, right? But then it stays kind of like that as it goes off like that. But it's crazy how right there it's exactly similar. No, that's not it. <clears throat> Let's see. I do this all the time, Stacy. Uh, hope all of you are doing good. Hey, well, there we go. The wall's right here. I mean, I could actually draw a line, and I wish I could put one in there, but <clears throat> I can't do it. The top of the wall is right there. And it looks like there's some maybe some bushes and things too. So maybe that's creating a problem. Yeah, no, you mean yeah, the little uh fin in the back there. Well, probably not. Caligal 3, but thank you again too. But I don't think the Chrysler has the whale tail antenna in the back. Right. And we can't really see it either, you know. So. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's exactly right. Like right there, even even this one isn't bad, you know, you know, because it's 
I mean, it's you're you're already. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why this one has so such the perfect curve in there. I mean, hell, can I? Uh, where is that? Where do I have that? Right in here, I think. Let's see. So there's one one of the times. That's one. I think that's the one I think is perfect. So if I was to move this up, just the uh, picture of the the Elantra. Somebody goes, "Gray, your Elantra is covering the vehicle," in the comments, and I go, "No, it's not. It's it's actually below the top of the wall." So what happens now if I? Click on and off of that. But I don't think the Chrysler has the wild tail antenna in the back. There's that Australian accent. And I'm going to rotate the... And that top of that's perfect in there. See that? I don't know. I think it's pretty good. And plus, it's up uh, up higher. I don't know how I do either. Buttercup. Hey, thank you so much, Don. Well, we only have two years till trial, most likely. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to move on to some other st uh, stuff. But right now, I'm just, you know, I'm in the midst of trying to you know, just I don't know figure some shit out like what we're doing right now this, this is something I wanted to see it's hard to you know here's one of those things if, if I was looking at the video this this is what I'm going to tell you guys if I was just sitting here looking at the video and I had no other reference whatsoever I wouldn't be able to tell you what it was what vehicle it is, okay? I can't tell, I can't see, I mean, I'm being intellectually honest right here. When I'm looking at that car there, I wouldn't be able to say, wow, that must be an Elantra, right? Like, like if you just, if you didn't know that uh, anything about the case, you wouldn't be able to say, oh, that's an Elantra right there. Oh, there's no, you know, you, wow, that's obviously an Elantra. Because there just isn't enough information, okay? <laughs> so let's say uh, thanks Don so let's say that it was a tie and you went well I can see how that could be a Chrysler 300 and then you go wow I can see how that could be in a launcher too in, in some of those frames so doesn't the winner go to that law enforcement has already told us that it is an Elantra isn't that where the winner is that if, if when you're in a place where you're not sure, you're looking at it going, if I was looking at this without having any knowledge of an Elantra or anything like that, and you're looking at it and you're saying to yourself, hmm, I, you know, does kind of have that angled thing when it drives off to the left, but it definitely has the curved total look of an Elantra when it just passes the pole each time even. So... You know, I, I'm just not sure, you guys. Like, if I, they gave me the picture of a Chrysler and a and an Elantra and said, can you tell us which what vehicle that is? And I'd say, well, look at this. In these frames, it looks like that. and this one, it doesn't. So I can't tell you what it is. And they go, well, uh, just before that, though, we were able to identify it as an Elantra on the this camera at 1112 King Road as it was driving that direction. And... And therefore, and then we see a good shot of it when it's turning around. So therefore, that's what that is. All right, that's how I would do it. 
So the winner is the Elantra because that's what law enforcement using all of their technology said it was. Does that make sense? It's weird how right every time when it goes by the pole, like even like even on this first one, right? Right there, it goes by the pole. And see, look at the shape of that. <laughs> I mean, look at that. Curved, beautifully curved right in there. And then as you keep moving in, uh, forward, it's weird, this part back here, uh, I wonder if there's a shadow on the wall back there, straight ahead. What do you think? What do you think, Stacy? And see, this is where I think you're getting some of the the ghosting effect where you know, it's dark out and you have a dark camera. Because look right over here. Look how narrow that gets. So here's, here's one way to look at it too. Okay, right there, right? So see how narrow the whiteness is? Like that's the part of the car, not the window. But then you go over to the one that he wants you to look at and look how wide this is. I don't, I don't see that in any of these shots here. And that vehicle's taller, so you should be able to make it out no matter what. And so that one, you can kind of see something trailing along. Like right there, you can make an argument. But there you go, there's the slanted portion, right? But then as it gets over to the left, now it's narrow again. And then the 357 one, it's never big like that. And it looks wider here because that's the back of the car. This darkness here is the rear window as it's making a sharp right turn and about to turn left again. You guys want to see how, how, how to do this in this program here? Just for the hell of it. I mean, if you're interested. All right, watch this. It's pretty cool, actually. And I just got this new... So that's how I have it slanted, about like that. You know, it's just eyeballing it. There isn't really a science to it. I mean, I could probably make this all scale and then make sure that that's 19 feet taller than that and then you know it's possible I might do something like that there's no reason to you know put the beams and everything in the I just need to have the overhead map and do it all right so <clears throat> so I already drew this line earlier see this this is a spline right here and the way to make a spline, uh, you can probably see it on the screen over here, is you hit the line, and you can just go like this, watch. And then if you hold the left mouse key down and drag, you can get, it sort of bends around and stuff like that. And then you can make all kinds of different designs. You know, you can be going like that, and you can close it, right? You can do whatever the hell you want to do. And you can have a shape modify along that line so you can take a sphere or a cylinder and have it kind of follow that all the way around so i already created this one right here right so when you look at it it's floating up in the air perfectly perpendicular to 90 degrees see that so i just found this awesome plug-in today so let's let's fix this though. I think this is a sharper turn. So if we go into this area and select a vertice, you can grab one here. And so maybe it kind of comes in more like that. Like boom and then a sharp turn. Cause that's kind of what I did. And what do you guys think? All right, now check it out. There's this new plugin called Glue. <laughs> it's not new, but I just got it. Uh, you pick the base object, which is the ground, right? Then you uh, I've already got the spline selected, and then you hit the Glue selected. 
And then look what it did. It did it put the spline right on the ground, even though it goes uphill. See that? It goes right up. Um, you know, it's right on the ground there. So I'll turn off the top one. And now you've got this. And then I take the vehicle here, and then I say um, animation constraint path constraint, and then select the path and. And there it is. Uh, it's too far in the middle, so let me get rid of some of these. All right, so if you go back, it looks like that, right? And currently, if I just drag it along the slider, it doesn't turn or do anything interesting. And so what you do is you turn on auto key down here, so anything that you do is saved. So you go like that, maybe move it forward, and then rotate it slightly then move the slider forward rotate it they used to have to hand animate all this different stuff but right there so now that's what it's doing see that rotate it around there here maybe about like this And then it's going to make a hard turn. It's pretty good. I think that one here could probably be sharper like that. Yeah. Then uh, we come down here, rotate it a little bit. Lock in a keyframe, get to here, lock in a keyframe, then go to there, do it again. Probably don't even need that part, but there you go, look at that. See that? You guys got to see all of that right then. And then there it is, see? See, I think that's kind of what's going on right here. There it is. That's what I was looking for. See how that just adds a lot of, like if you, if you don't have, like you can't see through that glass there. And I don't know if, you know, that back window. At night, it's just there. It's part, it's dark. It'll show up as dark. And I think that's where you're getting bulk in there. And I think it's lower too. Like this wall might be a little taller or something like that. So let's say it was like, kind of like that. And then you can't see, so more like that-ish for the Elantra. Yeah, it totally does, doesn't it? It's like a hard turn and then boom, then it's straight right there. So it starts to straighten out right at the end. So, you know, I, I don't know. Let me um, let me do some more editing on, on the, this, though. So you have to go in here, and, you, and I noticed that earlier, let me see if it's working. Yeah, see how it's below the ground, the mesh is in the tires and everything. So what I do for that is I actually animate the spline. I don't know why it doesn't smoothly do it, to be honest with you. But, um, so you just select the spline here and see how you can see the mesh around the tire I think if I go over here I can get a view of it so you select this little thing here and you move it up and man that's that thing is it's hard to grab it Now oh, there it is, I can see it. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty good. And then it's going to come around this corner. Oops, 
just going to turn that off. That's on the ground. Oh, this needed to be on auto key. Hold on. Pretty sweet, huh? <laughs> All right. There it is. So that right there is the the shot there and so uh, you should be able to see darkness because of that window there let's see if we can spot anything like that yeah there i mean look look right there see that that right back there is the darkness from the back window as it's taking that hard turn and there it is again You know, I'm having, the only part that's not working for me is this, just even this area of the whiteness. It's a little, well, no, actually it does work. Let me go back to, yeah, so. Hey, thanks, wise child. Yeah, see how you can see there's a whole bunch more mass gets put back there, right in this area. See that, that big chunk? See, the interesting part is none of the back, you can't see any of the back of it. So it should be, I wonder if I rotate it it needs to be rotated uh, each time if I go like or left. Now I do have it, it is kind of ramping up a hill. Now that was a way better way to do that. That was easy. You can see it. See the see the um, this line right here. The maroon, the um, sort of I don't know what color that is. Turquoise line. You can see it following it the whole way. See right there, it's too high. But if I move it down right there, it's right on it. And that's the floor, so that should be good. Ooh, man, I can see that one. All right, I think I just got rid of one of the turning animation parts. That looks pretty good. All right. And I, I don't know how high these walls are, right? Like if I had made this one, let's see. Yeah. 
problem is, is I have the, this is like huge 56 feet tall but that's not really what it is Ah, I made it so they're going to animate, unfortunately, the walls, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, you guys bored to death or what? See, I actually like doing this stuff, you know. This is what's fun, trying to figure something out. And so I think that we are, um, you know, like I said before, I wouldn't be able to tell you if you gave me a picture of the Chrysler 300 and a picture of the 2015 white Elantra and you said which one is it in this video here and I went frame by frame I would think it had characteristics of both of them however because law enforcement has already told us that it was a white Elantra that made these four passes and turned around back there that uh, to me that means that that's what it is if you had to choose one based on that that would be it like it would be like this well I wasn't able to tell and then somebody well would it help you to know that law enforcement said it was a uh, white Elantra well okay that makes sense I uh, wasn't the greatest I mean I was actually math was my best subject I wasn't like you know in the you know the I got pretty good at physics in college when I finally just sat and went, wow, this all makes sense. <laughs> you know, but I don't really use that a lot here. At least I use my eye a lot. And then, and then if there's things that I actually have measurements for, like the house, I use that. All right. So we have this one, just in case, right? And maybe I need to work on creating a, a version of Kaylee for the bedroom shot that we have. You know, the three the animation of that. That's such an awesome tool though that I just showed you. Because wa watch what you could do something. I'll show you in a second. Uh oh. Why is it frozen? Don't freeze. Well, I'm not sure what I would testify for. You know, I'm not, I don't have the, my thing is I don't, I can make animations and stuff like that. You don't have to have credentials or anything, but I don't have any, like if I went in front of the jury and just like the clowns on social media when they, you go, what are your credentials? Why were you on uh, court TV, Gray? Well, because I have a brain, you know, like my brain works. What about yours? I mean, it's sort of like, let's say you had a guy that was really good at, uh, he was a hacker, and he learned it all himself. And then you went, what are your credentials? And you go, I don't know, I just learned how to do it. But he's, but he's better than everybody else, like this hacker, right? Why does he have to go, well, I went to MIT in computer science, even though I'm, you know, forget it. I, I can tell you this, haven't you guys seen detectives and actual law enforcement people that can't figure stuff out on TV. Have you not seen that before? They can't figure anything out. I, I've seen cases where I'm just going, oh God, how did you, are you kidding me? 
Have you not even seen? You know, that really happened a lot in the Jody Arias case. Way back in the day. I, I couldn't believe some of the stuff that they were saying. Well, he, she stabbed him while he was standing up in the shower. Uh, Eleven times. Really? I mean, put a one if you'd stand still while somebody stood uh, stabbed you in the back while you're standing in a shower. Yeah, that doesn't happen. I'm going to tell you guys, this is, this is the truth about the Jody Arias case. We just did the whole trial. Again, the truth is the prosecution in that case was unethical. The Juan Martinez, while entertaining and fun to watch, conspired with Juan Mar uh, with um, let's see, what the hell's his name? I was going to think. Of Juan Martinez conspired with Kevin Horn and Flores, the detective, to change the sequencing of the murder weapon. They they too for a year and a half even argued in court that the gunshot was first in that case. But then when Jody Arias switched to self-defense, they decided to change the sequencing to knife first and had to do like mental gymnastics to make it work. Okay, they had to do the craziest things. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, right? And I remember one of the parts of trial, I, I used to, I still communicate every once in a while with Beth Karras. And I remember one time I was noticing all these different things with Kevin Horn up on the stand and how he seemed to have this horrible memory problem, just like they claimed Jody had over and over and over again because he couldn't remember ever talking to Detective Flores, the lead investigator about the case. He doesn't remember ever speaking to him. Wow, what a miracle. And then... Uh, one of the jurors asked a question in that case, and they said, well, if the gunshot, uh, and so one of the arguments was that uh, Travis Alexander would have been immediately incapacitated with a gunshot. However, Flores was told by Kevin Horn way before the trial that it would not have immediately incapacitated him. Then at trial, Horn even said, well, I think I said right here, it wouldn't have immediately incapacitated him and then looked over at Juan and he goes, I mean, no, I, it, it, it was so hilarious. He goes, no, I mean, uh, of course he would have had to have been incapacitated because it hit his brain. And then a juror asked, well, how did it hit his brain if the Dura Mater was intact? There was no hole in it. And then Kevin Horn looked around and went, ooh, shit, and then licked his thumb and went through the autopsy and went, oh, okay, yeah, that's a typo. Does anybody believe that shit? Oh, yeah, it's a typo, everybody. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. And I remember uh, Beth Karras said when, when she heard him say that, she just couldn't believe it. And the gunshot was first in that case. Everything absolutely adds up to that. The story with the knife first does not make sense in any way, shape, or form. Now, people go, well, great, there was no bleeding in the... Okay, well, you, you can do whatever you want to do. I, all I can say is I've watched that trial now, like especially some of these scenes, multiple times, and it was just scary uh, how blatant and ridiculous it was. Yeah, we just re-watched the whole thing on my channel like about, I don't know, seven or eight months ago. That was pretty fun. The Day Crew, remember that? <laughs> Mm-hmm. What was the other one, too? He said, um... Yeah, what was that? That was the Duramater one. But what was the one that he, she said... Wilmot said to him? It was really... She was right... She was on the right path on the questions. I remember just that one part, um, you know, because Flores said, and they argued in court. He's even on a video saying, we believe that the gunshot was first. And then they argued in court, 
for special cruelty with, with the gunshot and everything. And then at trial, he said, you know what? I don't remember ever speaking to Detective Flores about this case. So let me get this straight. The, one of the biggest cases in history, really, if the Jody Arias case was today, the Koberger case would look like a uh, just nothing, okay? That was the hugest. That trial back then was bigger than Koberger is now. Let's just put it that way. So imagine if that was now. I mean, it was huge because they released crime scene photos. There were images out there. You could see stuff. And he says, well, nope. I don't remember ever speaking to Detective Flores about this case. The lead detective, he doesn't remember ever speaking to, and it's one of the biggest autopsies he's ever done. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, everybody. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, so let me, I think I almost have to take her out of here now. And then this one. I mean, so this is, <coughs> do you guys think the bed, I think the bed is like this, because I saw an image recently, and I think that's kind of how it is there. Somebody sent an image, I wonder if I still have that somewhere. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, that is, randomly. So apparently this is a shot from inside her bedroom. And there's the bed there, and that's the door. And that's how I realized I had to build in a little, see right here how this juts out? I didn't have that before. So in this image right here, I think that's the door that opens up and there is a, a wall that this door just hits when it opens. And so her, her bed isn't even long enough where it hits the wall, so it's a little sh even shorter than what I have here. There we go. That's what I'm, I keep trying to get that one. That's about right. Probably a small little bed. And then the blood that was outside was right there. Maybe, yeah. I mean, I guess I could make the thud sound. J mofo. All right, let's try to get the the uh, seated position. Yeah, let's see. Got to open up uh, Poser though. Blender. 
No, they didn't say that. That's what I thought originally, but they and a probable cause says when uh, they en he entered the room, he could see Xana, and then well as he was entering, so like out in the hallway he could see Xana, but when he entered the room he could see Ethan. On that, I don't. I've never put animations on that platform. I mean, Patreon is just a good way to support, since you so YouTube doesn't take a percentage. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really. I just don't have the time. Um, I'm really busy <laughs> doing the show, and you know, I do shows every single day, so I don't have like three days to make something for Patreon and do all these other things. I. I just I appreciate your support and everything, but all right. Let's see if I get the Victoria. I see Daz people. That kind of is the yeah. See, so the characters are they come like that where you have to put the clothing on them. So here's some clothing. Uh, let's see. She probably wouldn't have worn like. I don't know. I mean, that's not. There's no pants or anything in here. I'm going to have to use a different character than that. Maybe I'll just use an old character from a long time ago. I'm just trying to find some, maybe Jesse, maybe, Jesse Casual. I could choose a character like that, you know, but maybe a different hair, Poser 6, Jesse hair, maybe put that one on there for, yeah. A Kaylee character, something like that. Actually, I'll use an older one. Yeah, those are four hair. Just do this one. There we go. And I'll make it. Uh, Uh, she didn't have brown hair. <laughs> Tell you that. Man, we're just about have one of those long, massive lulls again, you guys. I wish I could 
make her the hair blonde. I think there's a way to do it in here. It's just not really working. Isn't it? Where are you? I, I don't use this program as much as I used to. So I've kind of forgotten. Pretty uh, sore feet right there. <laughs> Look at those, they're like broken. Do you think she's just kind of slumped like against the wall, sort of, or? She says she was sitting up but slumped over. So I'm sure it's, some of this is in there, you know, like her. Yeah, I know she's in the corner. Oh, look at that finger, jeez. Ow. I've had a couple like that playing basketball. I think she would be against the wall. Could be anywhere though. You know, but something like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect because we don't know, you know.
textures I can. Nah, we'll see. I just think she got put back, like she f fell down into that corner. I mean, I doubt, like, I don't know, like, she sat up and then he kills her right there and she fought back and then she just still sat in the same spot. I mean, I guess that's possible. Yeah, that one finger is just mangled right there. What in the hell? Jesus. It's like it's not, um, is it that one? Oh, there we go. Ah, uh, well, you won't even see this hand anyway, so I'm just going to, not sure how to fix that, whatever the hell that was going on with that. <laughs> I don't like how that shit was that arcing. I think this would work pretty good. Now I'll just straighten these back out. More like that. That looks more natural than the.
I think that one's good in there. Yeah, it looked weird with that really crazy arch back. Now it looks kind of normal. I don't know what made them pop uh, privileged. I just think they were popular. I don't know if they're privileged, you know. Man, dead as a doornail in here. Dead as a doornail. Welcome, Ozzy. There's something. Yeah, I tell you what, I'll, I'm going to give away, I'll give away five. go 
Make sure to check out those accounts to see when they were created, all right? Oh wow, look how big. Oh, what the hell? Look at, look at this crazy ma mutant it turned into. Holy shit. <laughs> Whoa. What the hell happened? I'm gonna close out of here. That was weird. <laughs> well, thanks for gifting five there, Ozzy. That was very kind of you. Maybe I need to do something in here. So it's gonna have that same. I'm gonna have to import it somewhere else first, and I bet it has the same problem. Look at all this weird cheese. Yeah, I can see it. Look at that, just a mutant. Crazy. <laughs> oh man. I think it's because there's other characters in there that are have the same parts or something. Let me try one into here. Does she come in normally without anything? Let's see. bad too I can tell just by look at that look at that god it's like saw out of some weird sci-fi movie like that's an eyeball right there you guys and that's a that's the tongue of the person man what in the hell fingernails I mean that's some crazy looking creature right there <laughs> that's right out of, all it is is like the bones that you put in there have weights on them and poser isn't one of the main programs out there. Here, I know. I'm going to try something different. Here we go. We'll try something totally unique here. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's like, uh, it is kind of weird how it does that. It's all just such bizarre stuff. Actually, let me just see if there's another. I mean, maybe if we try like, well, no, the waveform object might be good. Single frame. Yeah, that way there's no bones in it. Single frame. Okay. And all by itself. No. Yeah. Didn't do anything. Include, use full texture maps, yeah, preserve existing materials. All right, let's see, might work this time, might work. That way there's no bones, those bones cause problems from this program. For sure. And now we're opening up 3D Studio Max again. Almost there, almost there. You mean sec what what do you mean, twisted owl? You can just say the words. Type in the the actual words in here. You don't need to try to get I mean, um, I, I think when people hear I was kinda disappointed <laughs> with with uh one of my friends who's a YouTuber. In the Delphi case, he, he used the word unalived. I just about, I just said, are you kidding me, man? Don't ever do it again. And Koberger wouldn't be that stupid because he, he's really aware of DNA. He's not going to... He went there to kill, and that's it. That's my opinion. I 
I mean, he's he's stupid, but not that dumb. He already knew about DNA. I mean, he was he took you know care to not leave much at the house and. I know it's correct. Crime, yeah, I know the crime scene. Okay, we're trying it one more time. Does it work? Does it work? It's coming. It's it's coming. Uh, here it goes. Is it gonna work? Where is it? <laughs> is it doing something somewhere? Try it again. Nothing found. What are you talking about? Is now it's zero bytes, so somehow that didn't uh, export. This one looks like it's... Yeah, here we go. This one has bigger, way bigger here. This one should work. <laughs> Kill shots? You mean stabs? tiny because poser is really tiny there there it comes I see it oh, that didn't work ah. did it keep everything to get the colors oh look at that it sure did nice all right if at first you don't succeed, dust yourself off and try again. Come on, you guys. After all that time, that's definitely super chat worthy, don't you think? Finally to get that done. I would think. I'll make her a little smaller. I mean, she could be like completely bent over there, but there you go. I think that's uh, it's better now. I 
食べそうねビオンジョンそうなのそうSo there you go. Thanks, Bridget Price. I guess you're the only ones that you're the only one that thought it was worth it. <laughs> Jesus, man, you guys are brutal. Absolutely. Well, there you go. I think uh, now this is updated. Everything's in the right places and everything. And I think that works. So, anyways, thanks to you guys for being here tonight and hanging out. You know, you kind of see how this, I mean, this is the kind of stuff I do on the side. Look how long this stuff takes just sitting there over and over and over. Just so that when I do a show, I can show something. Okay, well, thank you to Bridget Price, Gigi T, Eugenie, Cheryl Bullock, Ally Cake, Jeff H, Jessica Schubach, uh, Riddler3579, Ye, Cat Keeps On, Pancakes. Michelle H, Kathy Crow, and Laura Ray Beauty, and then Callie Gal 3 and the Broken Scout, each with a double cat eye, and without those we would have been, uh, only made it to half the goal with all of the stuff that we were looking at tonight. That's not good. Uh, Kami, 8675309, Buttercup, and then Cali Gal 3 again, so without that, we, you know, I, mean, I don't know if you want me to tell you, but we'd be at $100 total for the entire evening uh, without just those two. And that's where you know it's lucky instead of like, wow, everybody was, you know. And then Don, Wise Child, Ozzy, a new member, and then I gifted five memberships, then Ozzy gifted five memberships, and then Bridget Price right at the end. Thank you, Sandy Shirley. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for being here and supporting the channel. Hope you found it interesting. It was kind of neat seeing how weird the surveillance footage really is. Um, you know, like this wall, I thought, went that way, and that was the corner where the fence was, but it really had nothing to do with that. There's a fence there, and the wall just keeps going straight out. And what you're seeing right here is where it turns. So that means the surveillance shot that you're looking at right there was taken right here where this car is. I mean, right where, where I'm standing, not the car. So, you know, just about right there is where that surveillance shot is. And that's actually the end of it, to the left. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And I think uh, well now if you go back to the, um, let's see if I have it over here. Let's open recent. 
Now if you just look at the Elantra footage one last time here, uh, the, the animation of it, now it's hard to get it perfect because I don't have the perfect contour of the ground and everything like that and the heights. But uh, it looked like this. So it comes around and then right here it does sort of a really hard turn to the left. And I think that's where you're getting some distortion in the look and then it then it right there it kind of straightens out but the surveillance footage ends kind of right in that area so if you look at the one that's in the daylight and uh, this is that wall even though it looks like it you know if it went it goes straight but look what it does it distorts it that much this literally is straight off of that fence and goes like that and so you know what that's doing to the shape of the vehicles I don't know I mean it's interesting just to look at this like there's the uh, the windshield that dark spot and then it quick then it's so it's turning hard right and then you can't see the windshield anymore and then it's heading out so I mean it's kind of neat to figure out that so I just think that they you know there's distortion it's dark some frames look correct and some don't they look like they could be the Chrysler 300 so it looks like a Chrysler 300 in some of the you know the angle does not the amount of side paneling and some shots look like the Elantra and so the Elantra wins because law enforcement already told us it was by following it coming into the area okay, there you go So anyways, thank you guys very much for watching and supporting the channel. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And maybe see if there's one last look at the, the dogs. What are they doing? <laughs> oh God, look, look at Chloe over there. That's got to be about the cutest picture you've ever seen. Now let's see Blue's breathing. One, two, three. Four, five. Here, let me look at my clock here. Start it right here. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's like forty. You know, they want it a little bit lower than that. But he was at eighty when he went in there. Let me, let me do it again. Hold on a second. One. One. Two. Three. Six. Seven. Eight. So like. 36 or so. It's not too bad, I guess. The hell of a lot better, though. The hell of a lot better. <laughs> let, me, let me try it one more time. So nine times four, thirty-six. Eh, that's not bad. Yeah. Eh.
That's not bad. <laughs> All right. Well, anyways, thanks, everybody. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And as I always say, until next time, be safe out there. And special thanks to Caligal3 and Scouting Dude. Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now. And during this whole time, I have not seen one person that is a crime dissector, flag rejector. I'm a certified human lie detector. Gonna get ya on a stretcher if you try and play me like an old projector. Crime sector is my nectar. Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture. Crime collector, freak connector. And I'm always gonna be a pup protector. Fool deflector, interceptor. And I'm meaner than a specter with a vector on his pector. With all respect, y'all. Just remember, I've a temple for conjecture. I have no agenda. I'm no pretender. And I'll serve it to you straight without the blender. And in the end, I'm gonna send ya on a mission to reveal the true offender. Yeah, Good so night, everybody. Right. Yep. Good night, everybody.